Okay, this week's video, it's not going to be a follow-on from last week's video, it's going to be its own little separate thing, and it's something, a video I thought that I would never make, or at least not for a really long time, but in the end it's kind of all come to be, which is probably a good thing, like considering now that I've actually finally followed my own advice, yes, I know, those miracles where I follow my own advice, and the things I say that are going to happen end up do happening, and then I just wondered to myself, why didn't I do it a lot sooner? But, whatever, none of that. What is the advice of my own that I followed? The advice that I followed of my own was to get a ba 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 bum dumb phone. This is a Nokia 2720. It is a flip phone. Like, it's, well, if you're too young to remember what a flip phone is like, this is the original. Well, I mean, probably not the original, but, like, this is the, you know, basic concept of what a flip phone was back in the day. And it operates exactly how I remember and how a lot of people would remember how it works. Where, like, you, you, you know, you can, if someone's calling you, you can just, like, flip it open like that. And then if you want to hang up, you can just catch them on the flip like that. Um, it's wonderful. But why did I do this? Because smartphones, I mean, I still... Still have my smartphone here, still got it. Um, there's no SIM in it or anything, so it's, you know, difficult to use. Uh, yeah, there's real. There's only very specific purposes that I have that for, which is usually music related, or like if I'm playing music at home, or I need maps or something. So that's when I will swap the SIM out from the dumb phone back into the smartphone. And that's to, you know, if I'm going somewhere I've never been before. Yeah, I'll, I'll need to use that, but because I mean the the dumb phone does have maps, but I don't even want to imagine what that is like to use. But whatever, what is so great about having a dumb phone? I think one of the great things about having a dumb phone is that there is really no avenue, or it's incredibly difficult to use it in a way that can be considered a distraction or a time sink. I think that's probably one of the most important features of it. It's probably that and focus. It's like, you can't waste time on this thing because there's literally nothing you can do. Like, the most you can really do is, you know, send calls and texts. There is, like, and this is where the game has kind of changed, there is things like, if I look it up here, there is, you know, there is Facebook, there's WhatsApp, there's Twitter downloaded automatically on this, like, you, you can't, I, I don't know if you can get rid of it, you probably could, but it comes, like, even the dumb phones nowadays have some smartphone capabilities and stuff like that, and you can use things like Facebook and Twitter, but the whole point is to make it so unappealing, is, is to make those social media um, sites and platforms, I don't think you get TikTok on this, and man, it does have a camera, but it's a 2 megapixel camera, so I don't even want to know what that would look like. Um, but the main point is, well, what the main point of this part is, is trying to make using those apps like Twitter, like Facebook, like Instagram, whatever necessary, whatever the time sync is on your smartphone, it's either trying to get rid of them completely because you can't even download them on these kind of phones, or if they are available, to make the experience so god awful and inconvenient because that's what essentially the smartphone and much of the modern world is centered around. It's centered around giving you convenience and in turn they harvest your data or charge you a premium of some sort for that convenience. That's that's the trade off. Like usually, you know, think about it with um, food delivery, right? If you go and pick the food up yourself, it's usually cheaper. But it's not as convenient. If you have it delivered to you, which is more convenient, you get a better, like, you have to pay more. Like, you have to pay a premium for that. Like, it will cost you more for, the, for that food delivery. And the worst part is, the food is usually worse when it's delivered to you because, it's, you know, you, you, it's got to go all the way to you. It's not fresh, and you're maybe not the first person in the, the series of deliveries. So, it's like, you could get it cold, you know, and so you've spent this premium, but it is convenient. So that's one angle, and then there's the social media type, the, like, tech convenience of, like, yeah, the app is free and everything, but, you know, we harvest your data and are constantly building an algorithm and profile on you, and, you know, you just 
really don't know how all of that works and you know that's all operating in the background so yeah it's about making things as inconvenient as possible like trying to make these time wasters as inconvenient as possible and what you'll end up doing is you'll just end up concentrating your time and attention on more important things and having had it for about a month and a bit now I think there has been a shift I think it's going to be a gradual thing like it, it will be one where it increases and improves over time but I have noticed in the past month that I think I am a lot more focused and you know f find myself less and less looking at my smartphone or just in my phone in general and I've even gotten to the, the the stage where I just kind of walk out the house sometimes and I don't even bring my dumb phone because I'm like yeah you know like I don't need it you know it's like you know, what's it really going to do? Like, is it really that important? I don't know. Like, I, I, I just don't know. Like, I've, I, I'm going to, I'm getting to these points where I'm just like, I don't even really need to engage with the phone, even with the dumb phone. And I'm like, that's probably, a, if anything, a good thing. It's like kind of weaning yourself off this addictive substance, which is, you know, mobile phones and especially smartphones. Because it is an, it is an addiction. And I think... You know, you only have to look around on public transport to see the, you know, addicts of those phones on, the, you know, of that, of those mobile phones, those smartphones on the train. And people will defend it like, oh, well, is it really that matter? But like, think about what it really does. Like, especially when you're sitting there on the train, just either listening to music or watching or streaming something you know, a Netflix show or whatever necessarily it is, or just watching something on YouTube, you're, you're going into this disassociative state where, like, you're just, you're pulling yourself out of reality. And I know people like that kind of escapism, and I think, I think it can be dabbled with, but I think the, little, the least amount, the little that you do about it, like, you want to do as little as possible with that stuff because it's, it is... It's not good because it, it takes you out of reality and at the end of the day, you can try and escape all you want. You're stuck with yourself and you're stuck with y your life in reality. It's like there's no running away from that and unless you're willing to do something about it, you know, there's no like there's no point complaining and about trying to run away from it all. But, you know, what do I know? But I guess at the end of the day, I'm just trying to get it to around that, you know, I, I recommend buying a dumb phone and... It is a lot more difficult than I thought. A couple of years ago, uh, you know, if you were walking around a shopping center, like a fairly big shopping center, there would be those kind of like second tier mobile phone outlets where you could kind of get, you know, all sorts of just random phone stuff, usually from things years past, right? I thought that I would be able to just walk into one of those stores at my local shopping center and just, you know, be able to buy a dumb phone just like that. And the reality was it was not that easy. It was incredibly hard. And it just shows you where things are going. Like all of those second tier phone um, retailers had nothing but smartphones, like nothing but your typical, uh, you know, touchscreen smartphones. And I was like, dang, how am I going to do this? So in the end, I did find somewhere online, like I did find a site online that I could buy it from. So it, it is a little bit more harder to get than you'd think. It's not as simple and easy. Even though like a couple of years ago, I swear you could, you could still just walk into a store and still buy these types of phones, but not, it seems maybe those days are over and you have to get them online. Um, I did get one that where I could take the SIM directly out of my smartphone and put it into my dumb phone. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't bring over all the contacts so I've had to like slowly add contacts onto my um onto my uh dumb phone but yeah I think at the end of the day I highly recommend getting one of these you can still keep your smartphone but what I've noticed is that I use it almost mm, never like I, I barely ever use it anymore uh and even this like this thing I only I have it it's on me it's on my person usually but it is only solely for texting someone and calling and usually it's calls because I mean texting on this thing is is difficult and hard because you got to you do have to press all like the keys three times if you want to get the letter C which is is funny so um yeah it's, it's a real nostalgia trip in some respects you know going back in time like maybe like 10-15 years at this point but 
it's it's the, it's the way to go. I, I, I definitely having done it for a month and a half, like or a month, you know, about a month and a half. I definitely think it's the way to go. And I do, if if you're serious about, you know, achieving the most you can out of life, I think you need to get as rid of many time sinks, and you know, the saps on your focus as possible. And one of those is is definitely, is definitely uh, smartphones. And just all the cancerous apps on them. Funny little side story as an aside. So my brother thinks he's got ADD. And because and even people at his work have commented on it like a little bit like, oh, you can't seem to... And, he's, and he says that he can't re- maintain focus and can't like hold a thought for long and can't concentrate. And I'm just like to him, look, maybe you do like... Maybe you do have a little bit of ADD, but like the main thing that is causing that is this shit and especially because he's a huge fan of TikTok uh, it's TikTok it's it's that it's that whole thing of like every 7 seconds at 7 to 10 seconds you're going to a brand new topic like it's a and you never know what it is it's just you keep scrolling it's just oh a brand new thing oh boom a brand new thing oh boom a brand new thing like oh look at this look at this look at this look at this no wonder why you can't retain a thought or focus because you always have these just things blasting messages into your face and you're just like and your brain's just trying to understand what the fuck is going on but even before it can really grasp it it's on to the next one so of course my brother thinks he's got ADD but you know whatever and I told and I tried to tell him or I, I told my mum to go tell him that no you don't have ADD you're just addicted to your phone and you're like you're using things like TikTok and Instagram too much and those social media sites or apps sorry not sites who even uses the web page the apps, sorry, you know, you're using the apps too much and it's, you know, melting your brain pretty much. So yeah, get a dumb phone like me and retake your brain or focus or whatever you want to call it because those things are vultures. But, you know, see you around. Bye.